Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Everyone Loves Uncle Bernie, written by Farm Witch 4275. The tension hung heavy in the air as it was finally realized that peace talks were collapsing and war was inevitable. Tyraxis, high prince of the Corsica faction, had gathered here for a modicum of peace, hoping to avoid the losses of his men. He sat in his chair, opposing his former brethren, with these two Praetorians flanking him. Plasma spears at the ready. His human diplomat, Johnny, was desperately trying to ease tension. A Borean, the crown prince of the Hive Arrakis, sat proud at his seat, his purple skin glistening in the light of the room. Aborium was so certain of his victory that he had barefaced audacity to carry his human concubine with him. His human diplomat Martinez was unamused by tensions as he cast passing glances at the Praetorians flanking his employer. Aborian made sure to prominently display his most prized possession with that woman sitting on his lap. Surely we can find a way around this. There has to be a way to sue for peace, at least for this battle. Perhaps we can exclude some ships from the roster, or at least make it an even fight. Johnny could sense that he was getting nowhere, but he still had a few angles. Sure, we can sue for peace. After you hand over the system, those Grahenan spice mines are ours, and you are damn well know it. Martina slammed his hand on the table. You and I both know that if the fleet goes to battle, it would be an absolute slaughter. If your master was half the warrior he so claims he is, he would agree to roster a battle to make it fair, Johnny blasted his opponent. A Borean whispers into the diplomat's ear, the shame tactic and personal attacks work. A point made in anger, but still a point. We will agree to a standard galactic ship points allocation system. However, no holds part. Last man standing rules only. Martinez said with a certain sinister grin. Tyraxus hung his head in shame. The queen would have his head after this one way or another for this, but at least it would give his men a fighting chance. He gave a nod to Johnny and sent him a note on the wearable data manager. Fine, if we win, you will not come back to the system. The point was proven. Tactics ruled the day. If we win, you leave and you don't come back. A Borean thought for a moment, then nodded his head. Deal, Martinez said, extending his hand out. Martinez and Johnny shook hands and started drawing up paperwork as Aborian began to greedily fondle his prized possession, much to the blistering rage of Tyraxus's burning eyes. Suddenly, the door flung itself open. A human marine barged in through the door. Uncle Bernie's here! He yelled with an unimaginable excitement and charged back out. Uncle Bernie, all three of the humans said at once, and all three suddenly got up from where they stood and bolted to the exit with such speed that it made everyone's head spin. A few moments of awkward and stunned silence followed this occurrence. What the hell is an Uncle Birdie? The Borean asked as if expecting an answer. Well, uh... Uncle is a human term. It, it means brother of my father. Bernie, I believe, is someone's name. One of Tyraxia's Praetorians said, the two princes regarded each other for a moment longer, before one of Tyraxes' Praetorians broke the silence with his communicator peeped. My prince, sir, uh, every human ship in the system has uh, uh, disengaged. What? Both princes yelled out in unison. Mob signatures detected. There is a battle cruiser class vessel entering the system. A Borean's Praetorian warned. What treachery are you planning, Thraxus? A Borean lashed out. What are you talking about? This is your doing. How much did you bribe my ambassador, hmm? Just then, an interruption. Every communications unit on the station suddenly came to life. It was some kind of song, silly, whimsical, catchy. Are you lost in space? Need a bite to the face? Come down to Bernie's. Do you need a drink? Well, that's a cinch. Come down to Bernie's. Bernie's bar and grill is open. Active servicemen get a free beer on the house. All of the hivers on station and on their ships stood with absolute bewilderment as to what the flaming hell was going on. In the meantime, a very familiar-looking ship warped into system, drowned out by the cheering crowd as all of the twelve humans made ships in the system swamped it and docked as soon as it was safe. Thraxus stood from his seat and made his way to the exit. And just where do you think you're going? Aborium said with annoyance. Beer! Thraxus moved down the concourse ramp to his shuttle, 
and waited for his praetorian guard. And hastily, at their heels, Aborium and his guards caught up and sat down. Thraxus called the robotic driver to go to the human ship, Uncle Bernie's. The driver, a machine, let out a happy beep for some reason, and with a careless abandon, charged his way to the ship. Uncle Bernie's was a battlecruiser class. The six hivers took note of its exterior. It was several times larger than most human warships, and ten times more heavily armed. Mounted in various spots were storage tanks that looked like distilleries, and one could clearly see the ship had its own hydroponics and protein synthesis bays built into the hull. The human support ships had been completely emptied by the time the shuttle made it to one of the airlocks. The robot driver let out a mechanical woohoo as it hopped out of its car and hastily wheeled its way into the ship's maintenance bays. Even the machines were entranced by the ship. The six hivers made their way through the clearly marked hallways into a massive restaurant. Immediately, they were surrounded by humans of all classes and types who immediately reacted to their presence with a loud, Ahoy, matey! of approval before returning to the meals that they were enjoying. The restaurant had over 200 humans in it, but could comfortably seat 1,000 more. The place was a massive circular auditorium, surrounded on every corner by restaurants, eateries, and even a quaint little gift shop. What in the Queen's tits is this place? One of the Thraxus Praetorians thought aloud. I can't answer that, my man. Welcome to my humble restaurant and bar. A human suddenly spoke up from behind the group. The six turned around to the sight of a grey-bearded human with a large midsection and tool belt with cooking utensils and a strange uniform with a funny hat. Who are you? I am Uncle Bernie. Shut your holes and drink a beer. Active service man, get one free beer. He excitedly said, and then jammed a purple aluminium can into everyone's hands. At this point, Draxus was what the humans would call done. So he took a taste of the beverage. My goodness! His expression instantly changed to one of happiness as he drank more. Aborium timidly took a sip of his own canopy. By the mother! He exclaimed, then chugged the rest of it down with a fist raised high. Bernie regarded his new customers with a hearty smile and led them all to a table before serving them pizza. Within a few moments they were sitting down, Aborium's concubine Jessica returned to her master's lap with flushed cheeks and a silly giggle. The two ambassadors arrived as well, carrying a family-sized two-cheese pizza with mushroom, onions and smoked ham. Jessica showed them how to eat pizza by grabbing a slice, then squealing in delight as she tasted the slice. Martinez and Johnny likewise did the same, sighing in happiness, as though it was the first Christmas. The Hivers tentatively took their own slice of the delicious-smelling confection and took a small, cautious bite. Thraxus gave it one taste and threw decorum to the wind and began to aggressively scoff the slice down. The four Praetorians likewise did the same, followed by Aborium, who had Jessica feed to him. Thraxus sat back in his seat, carefully considering a small fact he suddenly noticed. This place was rather empty. Uncle Bernie approached and smiled as his usual mustachioed smile. Can I get you anything else, boys? Well, there's plenty for all. Thraxus suddenly perked up. Yes, Alakan. He looked at his all too happy Praetorian god. Yes, my uh, uh, prince, he said. Hand me your communicator. Patch me into the fleet. Holocom did as commanded. This is Thraxus, Prince of the Hive Cathron. All ships are to immediately disengage operations and report to Uncle Bernie's for lunch. He stopped after Johnny handed him a piece of napkin with something scrawled on it. And also, anyone who does not leave a tip will be shot. Aborium followed suit, commanding his own substantial naval forces and military to stand down, placing several thousand takeout orders for the planet and the station at Martinez's instructions. Within minutes, the ship was flooded with thousands of hivers from both factions. To Aborium and Thraxus' astonished shock, Uncle Bernie was there to meet them. All of them. Thraxus noted this and asked Martinez what the hell was going on. What, my lord? Martinez asked, confused. Uh, there's Uncle Bernie. Uh, uh, and there? Uh, and and there, there too. Uh, am I seeing a strange genetic anomaly or is this man a clone? He asked, bewildered. Oh, yeah. That's Uncle Bernie for you, and there and there too, and, and that, that, that's Frank, actually. He's Uncle Bernie too, but he likes to be called Frank, Martinez said, gesturing to the chefs and cooks of all various restaurants. Care to elaborate, please? Aborium said as he held a sleeping Jessica in his arms. 
Uncle Boney, my prince, is a human that owned and operated a restaurant at an old shipbuilding yard before Sol was lost, called Jupiter Drive Yards. After about 20 years on the job with that very restaurant, the company gave him one of our old refurbished magnificent class ornament ships. That's what the ship is. It's based on an old Trade Federation magnificent class in old Star Wars movies. Martinez explained, sitting down with a new can of beer. <laughs> yes, a, a lot of other restaurants and food franchises exist, but none come close to Birdie's. He's turned that ship into a roving restaurant that was there when Sol collapsed. He's been everywhere, just roams the stars, feeding and hydrating anyone he comes across to at the ab absolutely rock-bottom prices. He even caters to machine consciousnesses because the tech cults have a presence on the ship. All in all, Bernie's just a nice guy who just wants to own a restaurant. And damn, he does a good job. Johnny responded in kind and helped himself to a hot dog. And in order to ensure that I can provide a service that is needed, nay, demanded of my establishment, I opted to do some cloning and uh, mind copying, just to keep it all running how it needs to be. We share uh, somewhat of a gestalt consciousness too, so uh, uh, it makes things uh, a lot easier. Now, perhaps I can interest you in our dessert menu, Uncle Bernie said, firing up the ice cream makers and waffle irons. In the end, with all that had happened, neither side was ready or willing to engage in warfare. Both sides were either too full, too sleepy, or too drunk to do any fighting. When the hangovers and belly aches passed, there was a strange feeling of contentedness between the two factions. Both of them essentially forgot why they were fighting and were too stuffed, happy, or filled up to bother asking. Martinez and Johnny drew up plans for the conflict anyway, but they were never used. In all, Aborium and Thraxis agreed to a 50-50 split of resources in the star system, ultimately benefiting everyone, especially Bernie. One of the conditions of the peace talks was that Bernie always come around at least once every three months for a good booze-up. Because, after all, everyone loves Uncle Bernie. End of story. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. I would just like to thank our T5 members. Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.